Hello everyone, welcome to Ikeda platform and this is Robin Jangiria, your electrical faculty. In this video, I'm going to talk about the DC line insulators and I have come up with some important points related with the DC line insulators. It is kind of the similar with the AC line insulators. So nothing to worry uh, much that but some of the differences can be seen there and we will discuss one by one there. So let's just start with the what is actually the insulator. <music> So it is saying that the insulator is a string of the DC line is a string of the DC line which is actually made up of the porcelain and the toughened glass. So these are actually made up of the porcelain and the toughened glass so that you have to remember in as in the case of the AC line it is actually specifying that if you have uh, if you if you are talking about the AC lines it is kind of that so that is kind of um, uh, the whatever the insulators we were using for the AC lines the kind of the insulators we can use for the DC line also. So that is made up of as in the AC it is made up of the porcelain and the toughened glass same way it is made up of for the DC line insulators also. Now the insulator performance if you talk about the insulator performance so insulator performance is actually evaluated in the terms of the critical flashover voltages so that is evaluated in the critical flashover voltages that is important for the considerations if we are evaluating or if we are talking about the insulator performance along with that it is also depending on the critical withstand voltage crit critical withstand voltage how much the voltage value it can withstand and also the critical flashover voltage whatever the flashovers it means that it will have the high voltage value so that uh, the critical value we are considering there now what is actually the critical flashover voltage okay if we are talking about the critical flashover voltage is actually defined as a statistical mean having the 50 percent probability of a data group which is usually 20 flashovers on the specific insulator specimen so if you are talking about the critical flashover voltages so it is a kind of a statistical mean or you can say you are taking the average value of that so that is the 50 percent probability of a data group so if we are talking about the data group it means we we will create so how much it is affecting how much the flashovers has done or how much of uh, how much the flashovers has occurred there it is uh, it has been seen the practically the 20 flashovers on a specific insulator specimen okay now the analysis assumes the gaussian distribution okay here we are using the gaussian distributions as the if you know the gauss's law okay so that gaussian distribution or you can say the gaussian surfaces which we are taking for defining these so we can say that the critical withstand voltage so we can say the critical withstand voltage okay is defined as and the formula for that is is cfo equal to cws minus 3 sigma okay so that is all about this uh, this formula we will consider that is the CFO is equal to CWS minus 3 sigma. What is the CFO? Okay, critical flashover voltage. Okay, this is actually CFO we are talking about. That is the critical flashover voltage. And what is the CWS? If we are talking about the CWS, that is the this critical withstand. Uh, this this is called CWS. This is called cfo okay flash over voltage so this is cws and the cfo we are talking about and it will have the formula that is written here that is the cfo is equal to cws minus 3 sigma we, we will talk about that now if you talk about what is actually the sigma the sigma is written as it is the standard deviation and the cws represents that, that is the standard deviation which we were using in the uh, you can say in the mathematics okay so in that standard deviation we were uh, we are actually using because it is kind of the statistical uh, data which we have already told you so if you have uh, uh, static statics if you have uh, studied in the mathematics that is kind of data we will prepare 
and according to we are going to formulate uh, this situations also and it is written also the cws whatever the cws that is the critical <coughs> critical withstand your uh, voltage okay so cws which will represent the voltage level with 0.13 percent please remember that that is 0.13 percent of the probability of the flashovers so as we are considering the cws in the uh, formula so that is going to represent that if if this is occurring or the flashovers are occurring so the flashovers occurring in the your insulators it is kind of the 0.13 percent probability it means the chances of occurrence of the flashovers is going to be 0.13 percent it is very less okay now there are the special problems with the direct voltage stresses on the insulators so obviously that we know the direct voltage stresses that is the dc voltage stresses on the insulators insulator uh, stresses we have already discussed in the corona effect that is the g we generally represent so these are kind of the special problems or again the additional problems you can say now the first problem if you're talking about that problems then the first problem that we are actually considering is that on the uh, that is ion migration that is actually the ion migration that takes place in the insulating material so as we have the insulator and that insulate inside that insulator material insulating material we will have the ion migration so that is the your first problem which is actually a function of the temperature it means as the temperature will change according to that ion migration is going to be changed in the insulator material now an insulating material and the insulating material should have very little ion migration so that should be very low if general talking even at the higher ambient temperature if the temperature is very high okay and at that time also the insulating material will have the ion migration kind of very little there can be the thermal runaway okay there can be a thermal runaway because that is a kind of the continuation process which will occur there as you have studied about the your uh, transistors there is a thermal runaway we have seen there <clears throat> and that thermal runaway is due to the ionic condition conduction that is due to the ionic conduction is a very narrow zone of the dielectric which results in the aging of the dielectric which results in the aging of the dielectric the current that flows in the insulator body so what will happen due to this uh, the flashovers the charges will be distributed around the uh, insulator body so because of that the current starts to flow around the insulator body and which is actually depending on the resistivity and which is also a function of the temperature again okay guys now there is also the phenomena of electrolytic process due to the creepage currents now this uh, we are talking about the creepers currents okay so there is a phenomenon of electrolytic process i know uh, uh, you you very well aware of that electrolytic process because if we belong to the electrical engineering we have already st studied about these phenomena in our starting of academics so due to the creepers currents along with the surface of the insulators so there is a uh, there is a phenomena is occurring there surface of the insulator that you have to remember important one now so what happens uh, now we will talk about what happens due to these currents now these currents cause the electrodes to increase in the volume what that is what currents the current which is causing due to the electrolytic process the flashovers so the current will be caused by that will flow around the body of the insulator and that will if that is occurring then that will cause the electrodes to increase in the volume so the volume wise they will increase going to increase and that is occurring that is a partly through the deposition of the material and partly as a result of the chemical process 
so there is an increase in the volume which is actually due to the currents and uh, what is happening there it is partly by two uh, of the process one of the process is through the deposition through the deposition of the material the whatever the, the materials will be deposited from the another conductor all the electro uh, electrolyte which is filled between them so there will be the deposition of the material and also as a result of the chemical process so there will be chemical process will be there now so what happens the insulator design now we will talk about the insulator design as we have studied the some of the uh, you can say the uh, uh, the bad things or you can say the uh, critical conditions which may cause uh, to the effect of your insulators also so according to that or you can say the worst condition so according to the worst condition we are going to design the insulator so that insulator design must take place this into account to avoid the mechanical failure so there should not be a mechanical failure so we are taking into considerations of all the worst cases which i have listed there okay electrolytic process will happen the flashovers will happen okay ion migrations which is included depending on the temperatures all will going to happen there so all we are taking into account so that we can design the insulators in such a way so that there should not be any mechanical failure okay guys now we'll talk about the another points now the insulator strings insulator string is subjected to a direct voltage in addition to the transient impulses of the different waveforms insulator string if you have studied in your uh, transmission and distribution chapter of the power system so there will be a kind of the insulator which is uh, a tower okay uh, hanged from the tower so that the transmission or uh, transmission lines can be attached there and these insulators and we also find their insulator insulator efficiency also so this is called the insulator this is called the insulator your uh, insulator uh, string in which the number of insulators are connected according to our requirement and what kind of uh, that requirement that is depending on the types of voltage carrying by the transmission lines if it is low voltage line or you can say the low tension line medium tension line high tension extra high tension extra high voltage uh, high tension okay uh, kind of uh, we have seen there so that is talking about that is the insulator string that is the insulator string is actually the subject to the direct voltage in addition to the transient impulses of the different waveform now the creepage distance the creepage distance of the insulator is determined by the operating direct voltage while the string length whatever the string length is that okay number of the insulators are connected is actually the determined by the impulse voltage level okay that is determined by the impulse voltage level as the length of the string as the length of the string will increase which will cause the height of the tower to be affected and also costing will going to be increased there so it is a specifying that if we are using the string okay that is the insulator string due to this impulse voltage level and all the kind of all the operational conditions what we are actually required and due to that if this is actually occurring or this is happening then the length of the string will increase so what will be the affected of the length of the string is going to be increased there that will cause the height of the towers the tower height is going to be increased or going to be affected there if the tower is affected or the height of the tower is affected it means it is increased then there will be obviously the costing will be increased that is kind of the costly uh, system is to be there okay guys now we will talk about the another point as we know the transient over voltages transient over voltages that is kind of the for the short duration of time so don't worry about that and is also written that r is smaller with the dc lines if you are using the dc lines so transient over voltage may occur in your ac transmissions and the dc transmission systems so if we are talking about the for the dc lines it is going to be a smaller if we compared with the ac lines okay although it is high but if we are comparing with the ac lines then it is going to be uh, lesser or you can say the smaller now there is 
economic incentive okay there is a economic incentive to make the ratio of the creep edge distance to the string lens as great as possible it means if we if we are interested in designing the insulators or designing the insulator system for the dc lens so what we have to do we have nothing to worry the simple thing we have to know that the ratio which is actually the creep edge distance to the string uh, string lens creep edge distance to the string lens if it is more then that will be the economic otherwise it is costing and which we have studied or which we have learned in the above points the costing will increase due to the height of the tower so we have to maintain we have to maintain the ratio that is the creep edge distance to the string lens in such a way that it will be more so that the economical incentive can be maintained there now now the next point the major problems related with the dc insulators okay what is actually the major problems which is related to the dc insulator is accumulation of the contamination through the direct voltage stresses is more than the ac lines what is actually that if you are uh, considering the dc insulators if you are considering the dc insulators so there will be a chances of accumulation of the contamination contamination uh, contaminated or you can contaminated we if you have uh, learned that word okay so that that you have to use here the accumulation of the contaminated okay so you can uh, you can say the dirt particles are uh, attached to there okay so accumulation of accumulation and the collection of that so collection of the contaminated uh, uh, contaminated surroundings through the direct voltage stresses is actually the more as if we are going considering or if we are taking in account ac lines if you are comparing with the ac lines then it is going to be more in the dc lines now the collection of the dirt particles that is the contamination uh, i was talking about is also less uniform than than with the ac okay so if we talking about the uniformity in every scenario we have to consider that the uniformity should be maintained if we are talking about anything okay the roughness will cause your factor along with that factor is going to be increased the collection of the dirt particle is also less uniform than with the ac which is providing the collector wings close to the ends of the strings that is not the wings that is rings collector rings close to the ends of the string helps in making the field making the field distribution more uniform and that you have already studied in your uh, ac power systems what that you have studied that is in the your uh, transmission and distribution system in that chapter you have already discussed to making the uniform uh, uniform stress so for making that uniform stress you have used some of the rings also or that kind of things uh, you are going to uh, see here also the uniformity should be maintained and for that you are uh, doing the some uh, stuffs here the collector rings close to the ends of the rings helps in making the field distribution more uniform and also if this is happening then it is kind of reducing the accumulation of the contamination okay so if we are doing that then obviously it is going to decrease or accumulation of the contamination okay now now next point that is important insulators are cleaned by the heavy rain okay as uh, they are in the open condition open environment as a tower in the open environment so what will happen whenever there is a heavy rain uh, occur then the insulators may be cleaned okay and while the fog and dew which makes the dot conductive uh, without the removing it okay makes the dirt not the dot dirt conductive without the removing it and which may cause the flashovers around the conductor the natural phenomena is talking about that point is actually talking that if there is a heavy rain then that will be cleaned what is the contamination okay accumulation of contamination and contamination of what contamination of the dirt particles but whenever there is a chances of the fog or dew and that will not remove it what they will 
what they will do they will uh, make it conductive and when they are going to make it conductive so it was going to be the flashovers again already we are uh, uh, al already we were facing the flashovers in the some conditions and now it is again adding to the flashovers the now the flashovers will be around that and the insulators also now if there is an unfavorable weather conditions unfavorable weather conditions or oh, you know very well it may be desirable to operate the dc line at the lower voltages by the converter control or by the removing the sum of the series connected switches so that is the important con consideration because we may face this uh, unfavorable conditions anytime so we should be aware of that because if we are facing the un unfavorable weather conditions so what you have to do you have to just operate your dc lines at the lower voltages okay and what how can you uh, how can you do this you can do this by converter control by the converter control or uh, another way of uh, operating this is by removing the sum of the series connected bridges okay so that there will be no harm to the equipment now the rod and the plane gap type geometry can be seen can be seen between the conductor between the conductor and the tower so in between the conductor and the tower there may be a different kind of geometry and that geometry is kind of rod and the plane gap and such gaps having the width stand strength is higher the combination of uh, uh, written again so combination of the impulse and the direct voltage than with the pure impulse alone so it is saying if you are using the uh, if you are using the pure impulse alone if you are using the only the uh, pure impulse so uh, what happens during the such gaps with the stand is higher because at that time we are using the combination of the impulse also with the direct voltage so with the stand capability or with the stand strength is going to be increased there and this is uh, written here this is a graph for that uh, this is the pure impulse if we are talking about the pure impulse this is a the pure impulse okay and uh, this is the pure dc and this is the pure dc so this is a kind of uh, the graph and it is a gap spacing if we are talking about the gap and this is the voltage in the kilovolt so that is the graph is uh, i was talking about now the some of the last points here now the flash overs was this is the flash over this is the flash over flash over are caused by the lightning strokes again and again we were actually talking about the flash overs but flash overs how are actually they are causing mostly they are mostly causing by the lightning strokes which usually affect one pole to the one of the pole of the bipolar line bipolar will have the two uh, two dc lines two dc links but won't have any uh, grounded uh, terminal so one of them the one of the dc link is going to be affected by the lightning strokes if there is a flash over occurring so due to that uh, lightning strokes there will be the flash over and due to that flash over is going to be the one pole of the bipolar line to be affected now due to the coupling between the two poles as we know there is a coupling obviously there is a coupling bipolar we are talking about so if there is a coupling between the two poles then the over voltages can occur or can be transmitted okay transferred to the healthy pole also as we have the unhealthy pole due to the uh, these flash overs but as also we know the coupling of the two poles is occurring and due to this coupling the transmission can be there over voltages transmission can be there to the so uh, so what happens the healthy pole will also be affected there now so this is to be considered for designing the insulator and prevent the consequence fault on the healthy pole okay so that is all about uh, your insulators in the dc line i hope you have understood all the points each and every point thank you so much